understand why is it that certain students do well in school and others don't do well maybe you even in your own family you know maybe your own brothers and sisters are doing as well as you're doing okay so the the reason why i'm asking these questions is to try to learn more about you so let's start off with just Lydia Flores, I go to Belmont High School. Go ahead and pass it. My name is Aida Sanchez and I go to Fairfax High School. Okay, you have to talk a little bit louder so I can hear you. Okay. My name is Alex Lara. I'm a teacher, my history teacher. She's the only person that has really helped me through all my classes, through all the problems that I've had in school. And it's because of her that I'm right here and now. Okay. Well, um, my school has helped me a lot in to, uh, choose my, some of my goals. Um, most of it was a couple of counselors, which were very helpful. One counselor which got me into this honors program. It was a new program and he really um, helped me in deciding to uh, stick with it because there were a lot of ch times that I just couldn't handle it. I just wanted to quit. And um, I talked to him. I, I even, um, he even gave me passes to go to his, cl to go to his office and talk to him so I can feel a lot better. And it was very um, influential on me. Nosotros en Wilson tenemos un programa de ayuda a los uh, latinos que vienen de otros países eh, que no este, hablan, están bien identificados todavía con el idioma y se les se les apoya, nos apoyamos entre nosotros. Uh, es, en, los que saben más le, le enseñan a los que saben menos. Tenemos consulars también bilingües y este y es un buen programa. Si, eh, el, el grupo se llama ALAS, Association of Latin American Students, y, y es uno de los programas que, que más nos ha ayudado a nosotros y, y por ese por medio de ese programa supimos de este chicano el latino youth leadership conference. Let me ask you some more about your high school. Are there enough places for you to go when you need help? And does your school consider the achievement of Chicano students important? And if it is important, how do they let you know that? Hmm. Uh, well, first of all, there are lots of places to go. Uh, many counselors, the principal herself, um, her office is always open to any student who has any problems and um yes they do let you know that you are that chicanos are important as my school is that's we're all about chicanos you know all of us are from the same race and and um they they always try their best to help us okay. well like i said before we were having some problems with with uh, our culture and everything at school, uh, people, it seems like there's n there isn't enough counselors for us. I mean, it's, I don't know, everybody's having problems with classes and everything because uh, the counselors are so busy programming the people that they don't have time to help them out with their problems. But uh, we've, we've talked a lot about it and we're trying to make it better and the school it's putting a lot mm -hmm. and the students are too so it's getting better over there okay. okay um about there being places to go to there are places like i say I, I most of the time i go with my counselor but um we do have a similar program like he was talking about but we have a bilingual office where several of the hispanic teachers and they're bilingual they help uh, students they offer time between classes and everything so they can talk to uh, Hispanics that just came from Mexico or just anybody that needs uh, help like in homework they help them they even walk into the uh, some of their classes and take notes and help them in the test but um, we do we do have a s sort of a problem because we are like one third of the uh, school is Hispanic and not not many of them are succeeding Mm -hmm. Most of them, you see them up front and uh, hanging out on the, uh, in the street. And that's, be that's because they come from Barrio, and, the barrio and uh, they, they don't really encourage them to stay in the college prep classes. And that's one of the problems Who's that we have. Them? Teachers and, like, a lot. The bilingual teachers really do encourage them. But, um, I mean, like, they're not really accepted to be in a college prep class. And they, they themselves feel out outside, out of place. 
que repito todo o entiendo? No, sí, entiendo. Okay. En, en, nuestra escuela, en la escuela Woodrow Wilson tenemos este counselors eh, pues para los respectivos grados, pero yo pienso que no son suficientes para los, lat para los latinos que no hablan el, el idioma, porque los latinos que, que no hablan el idioma tenemos el problema de que nos dan clases muy bajas o nos dan clases muy altas. Entonces, este, eso es lo que hace que los que los latinos se salgan de las escuelas porque o se les hace muy aburridas o se les hace muy difícil. Entonces es necesario que haya más eh, consulores bilingües en, en las escuelas para ayudar, porque en la, en la escuela Woodrow Wilson nada más tenemos uh, dos consulores que, que nos ayudan y ellos pienso que pues es mucho trabajo para, para todos, uh -huh. aparte de que ellos tienen otro trabajo que hacer y, este, y pienso que es necesario que que traten de, de, de poner o hacer algo para, para que los estudiantes no, 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 no sigan haciendo eso de, de salirse de la escuela por, por falta de, de atención hacia, hacia las clases. Okay. Vamos a hablar un poquito más de, de, de las cosas que, que deben pasar por, con los estudiantes que no están haciendo bien en, en este, la escuela. ¿Tú hablas español? Yes. Okay. My next question has to do with you are all doing well in school, okay? You're doing better than other kids, right? But there are other kids that aren't doing so well. Why is it? What's holding them back? Well, in my school, some um, don't believe in themselves. Some think that they're, you know, they started off wrong and they can never, they can never be somebody. Yeah. Mostly, mostly in my community there's a lot of gang involvement and some are so into it that that stops them. But my school has many programs, which I can't think of the name right now, but to help those who don't go to school, uh, also there's a class on psychology to help them find out about their problems. I myself was involved in the same things and I never went to school and I never thought I could do well. I had straight fails, but um, uh, I had help from my psychologist, which I thank very much because she really helped me believe in myself. And now I only have A's and B's, one C, and no D's and no fails. And I really feel proud and it shows me that I can really Anybody can do with anything if they really want to do it. It has to be up to you. So I kind of talk to my friends who are in the same situation I am, but they, uh, they need more help. I really can't. They do see that I did it, that maybe they can do it too because I was the same as them, but they're just too into gang stuff that it's hard for them mm -hmm. to give it up. So I think that's one of the main reasons right there in my community. Yeah. Uh, I think that rejection from society play an important role in people getting out of school, Hispanic people, because it's pretty difficult to overcome that rejection once you felt it and to fight it and just to think that you, you're worth something and that if somebody else doesn't appreciate, you should appreciate it and you should have self-confidence and try to work hard and just prove to people who you are and what you can achieve. So I think that reaction is pretty important in people getting out of school. Mm -hmm. um, just to, con to continue what she was saying, uh, uh, a lot of rejection and uh, a lot of them, like my friends, most of my Hispanic friends are not into school. Just very couple that I really uh, really I enjoy being with them because they are into school but most of them I see them and they're very smart some of them are really smart and I don't I cannot understand myself why they don't continue uh, they're not into school but um, most what, what I, I understand so far is just that most of them they feel better about themselves and they just don't feel like being into school because that's not, that's not what's in and they feel um, with their friends hanging around with them they feel a lot more comfortable than being at, being in school with doing stuff that they don't they don't uh, 
they would not like, but they, that's because they have not tried it. Most of them um, have not had like homework, like three hours of homework or something. They have easy classes where they can finish the homework right there if they choose to do it. If they choose to do the homework, they can finish it right there. The teachers are there to help them, but um, they have not been pushed to do other things. And um, that's a mistake. Con respecto a este problema, este, yo pienso que algunos latinos este, tienen otras cosas que hacer, como por ejemplo, pues, hay latinos en las escuelas que no tienen este, sus padres aquí y, este, y necesitan trabajar, trabajan y estudian a la vez. Entonces, tienen que poner parte de su tiempo y parte de su mente trabajando, eh, tratando de sacar el dinero para pagar la renta o cosas para sobrevivir en este país. Uh, otra de las cosas es la mala información que, que existe, o sea, a lo men por lo menos eh, en las personas que conozco, que, que yo he tratado en, en, el, en el barrio de la Misión de San Francisco, personas que vienen aquí y, y cuando preguntan si pueden entrar a la high school, les dicen, si, si eres mayor de 18 años no puedes entrar, entonces ahí se separan y no, no, no tratan de buscar otra, otra cosa. Y al menos yo tampoco sé de programas especiales que haya para latinos o, o este, mayores de 18 años. Este, nada más he oído hablar de, de, de programas de ESL, ESL pero para, proseguir, para seguir uh, estudiando no he oído hablar de programas. A, este, y quisiera pues, que se hiciera algo para que los latinos que no saben... Este, a dónde, a dónde recurrir para, para tener información acerca de estas escuelas o qué se les ofrece a ellos en este país. Otra de las cosas también, si hay financiamiento para otras personas, yo pienso que también puede haber financiamiento para, para latinos y por qué no para los ilegales que hay aquí en Estados Unidos. Muy bien. <laughs> ok, una otra pregunta, y esto tiene que ver con tus amigos, ok? You're doing well in school. And do your friends give you support to do well, or do they discourage you from doing well? And if they do discourage you, how do you deal with that? <laughs> well, um, to me, it's both. Uh, some, when I first started uh, doing good in school, I was first discouraged because, you know, first of all, some of my friends don't go to school because they want to be around their friends, and, you know, it looks it looks dumb to come out of school with books and oh you go to school now and you know and they just look at you and like oh now she's doing something for herself and she's not gonna kick back with us anymore or she's not gonna be with us anymore because she's going to school but then again like when I got chosen to come over here they were real happy for me um, they wished me good luck they celebrated and everything so but a lot most of my friends, well, all of them, don't go to school. They even said that I was one of their first, well, as they call me, homegirls that <laughs> gets good grades <laughs> and um, and is able to come down here. And this is a big uh, uh, experience for me in life. And I, but I, most of my friends don't come to school. But now, how do you cope with that? How do you? How well. Do you going I because I learned that school is very important to me and my friends are not always gonna be there for me and uh and I learned that school is fun once you know what you're doing and you really get into things and you you find out school is fun and important and especially when you have people behind you or that believe in you like you know they're always calling you and telling you yeah you're doing good I'm proud of you keep it up and mm -hmm. that really makes you go up and more up mm -hmm. and so I'm I'm like I said I'm happy at Belmont and but most I cope with it because school is really I love my friends that's one thing it was real hard for me because I barely started getting good grades like I said because my friends to me were the most important thing mm -hmm. but now I realize they're not always gonna be there for me but even though they even tell me that, you know, I'm not going to be able to hang around with them anymore because, oh, I'm going to be something big and they're not worth it and all this. But I really don't think like that. They might be, you know, 
gangs or whatever, but to me they're always going to be my friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this might seem strange, but I don't really have friends. I mean, I know a lot of people in school, but I'm not close to anyone, so nobody really interferes from what I do. But I do know a lot of people, and I just try to help them in any way I can. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I don't, my, as my friends, I do have a lot of friends, but um, they don't really either support me or discourage me. Some of them do make fun that they think I'm like really smart, which I'm not. And they they make jokes like you know, they say stuff like he knows everything, ask him and stuff like that. But uh, they they're just joking around, and I know that and I understand that. But they understand that I'm trying to be somebody for myself, and they in that way by not really saying it, then they support me with that. But um. One thing is that uh, when I first came here, I didn't speak any English, and I almost fell into that, into that um, not to go to school, because um, as I was learning English, I started getting friends, and I really enjoyed being with them, other than doing my homework and all that, and um, staying out, just going around the streets, doing nothing, basically. But, I mean, I, I really look into that, and there's no future into that. There's no future, and I was able to see, see that. And my parents, with my parents' support, which they didn't allow me to go out uh, and stay out all day, with their support, um, I was able to uh, find my goals, and hopefully I will pursue them any further. Con lo que respecta a mis compañeros, este, pues yo más que nada es, le, les pongo el ejemplo, porque yo los quiero ayudar. A mí me gustaría ayudar a, a todos los latinos y, y este y más que nada pues para, para tratar para hacerlo y para poder hablar con ellos es poniendo el ejemplo este por eso yo trato de estudiar pues lo más que lo más de aprovechar lo más que puedo y tratar de pues de jalarlos verdad de, de, de decirles que se que hagan lo mismo y que y que ahora sí como están diciendo en este En esta conferencia sí se puede y este por eso me interesa mucho y, y en cuanto veo un programa o algo de ayuda a, a los latinos trato de estar más este más activo con ellos um, por lo que respecta también a mí porque yo también estoy en esa situación y este pues con Con lo que respecta a mis a mis amigos, pues son los son pocos los que tengo aquí, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Pero Pero los sí. amigos que tienes en la escuela hacen bula de usted cuando lleva sus libros a la casa o mm. ¿Qué le, qué de ellos? Muchos de ellos tienen este pues una vez me pusieron un apodo porque siempre cargaba yo un libro, ¿verdad? Siempre me veían con un libro. Me pusieron el, el estudioso, pero uh -huh. este <risa> Pero, o sea, no, no me molestaba que, al contrario, me les ponía, me les pongo a platicar y tratar de que ellos también traten de hacer lo mismo. Uh -huh. Por lo menos lean algo para que traten de aprender y, y si no, pues, si no tienen una carrera, por lo menos que se vuelvan líderes o algo así para que ayuden a la sociedad. Uh -huh. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Thank all of you for helping me with this. And You've been very helpful. Yes. I'm going to ask questions about about you and what has made you a successful student and what are some of the things that you've done to, to get where you are today. Okay, let's start at this end. Hi, I'm Teresa Hernandez with Beaumont High School. What's it? Oh, Beaumont, California. Okay. My name is Elsa Jimenez and I go to Venice High School at, in Venice, California. Uh, my name is Danny Armenta, and I go to Clovis West High School in, in Fresno, California. My name is Anne Benito. I'm from Sacramento, and I attend Grand High School. Good. Let's start off with the first question. What, ha what role has your school played in helping you get where you are right now? Has your school helped you? And if they have helped you, what did they do to help you? Um, my school's helped me in the way that... Um, the honors classes um, for more, um, I don't want to say smarter students, but more capable students. And um, they don't really motivate a lot um, for like 
if you want to take a chemistry class and you got to see in biology, they wouldn't let you take chemistry. They discourage you into that. And um, they also, um, like, help you in leadership skills, too. They have little meetings on, you know, and they have booklets, and they pass them out if you want to run for an office. It's a big booklet on um, leadership qualities and skills that you would need to do such a thing. Okay. Um, I feel my school has done nothing for me at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <The> <laughs> okay. You don't have to agree, just uh -huh. share your answers. The only thing that they have is the, the AP honors classes, but they have done nothing to encourage me. And the other, on, on the contrary, they di discouraged me and well, th like the, like I said, the only the only thing they've had is the AP and the honors classes that, but I've had to fight to get into them. I have had to say I can do it, you know, even though they've had they they didn't think so. Well, the school that I'm enrolled in now, I started last semester, and I was going there for two months when I found out about the conference, and uh, they were very. High, with a lot of high spirits about me. They felt that I was a strong head Hispanic who can do stuff and lead the certain section of Hispanics that were going to the school. There was 250 there. And so they did everything in their power possible to make me just so I can be happy and, and um, anything I needed, if I needed um, people to send off mail for to send off my mail booklet and people to type up my stuff, they did it for me because uh, they wanted just boost up my spirits and make sure that I was comfortable in the school so I can be the ro a role model for the Hispanics for the remaining two of my high school years. And so they really did stick behind me, teachers and counselors. Um, well, my school, it's, um, it lacks that. It doesn't really uh, push Hispanics into going into a uh, field or encouraging them to take classes. Um, we have one Hispanic on the staff, and that is my counselor. She's the one who has said, you know, um, you know, go to the conferences and so forth, because it's been, I think, like five years since we had a Hispanic or anyone attend from my high school, mm -hmm. because they never say, you know, go attend. Instead, they're, they, they want the other races, such as the, um, the Orientals and the Blacks have people who who represent them and push them, but when it comes to Hispanics, they frown down on it. They're like, "You're not, you know, you should just, you know, stay clear back because I'm supposed to be attending a conference in October, and I need money for it, and my school will not sponsor me." And that's kind of sad, I think. So myself, I push myself. If it's anything I do, it's because I do it for myself because I want to be proud of who I am and the race that I belong to. You know, I believe we can all uh, experience from it. Okay. That leads into my next question. Does your school in general consider achievement important for all students? And if they do, how do they communicate this? Um, my school, I mean, I think any school would consider um, achievement important, but um, they don't really go out and encourage us. Like, they're really just in it for the reputation of Beaumont High School being um, you know, the class of 86 has the, be the best scores, or they don't really go to us, and they don't give us, um, they don't give us the classes, you know. I mean, I, I had, I had a all AP classes last year, and um, they were hardly a challenge, you know, and it's just, it's too easy, and I would achieve if I had um, something to challenge me. Um, I feel that they, like she said, that all, all schools want the, you know their their students to achieve, but it's more. It seems impersonal to me. It's just like they vaguely make reference to you trying hard. And when it came time to the CTBS testing, all they wanted is they they made it sound like just as long as the school looks good. You know, it wasn't for yourself. You know, it wasn't for the student. It wasn't you know for your achievement. For so that is really vague and impersonal. It's more like. You know, if you, for my, I, I do, you know, I work hard for myself. And the people who don't have that discipline and motivation, well, I, I doubt they'd want to do it for the school either. The school doesn't send them a message that school is important and that they should really be working academically? Uh, no. I'd, well, I haven't felt that. Okay. Well, in my school, they, they have a lot of 
high recognition. Um, they got a great sports program. They have a lot of high achieving academic students to go places. A lot of college graduates, I mean, come from the high school. From what I've seen from the six months that I've been there, or less, whatever it's been. And um, one semester. Well, we have about approximately 4,000 students there, and 250 are only Hispanic. And, and I guess if you put it all together, Anglo outgrows everybody else because of the community as itself. And so what they do is they have a lot of kids who score high on grades, but, but then some of them come out still not knowing anything. All they do is work on the grades. I mean, it's really pathetic. I mean, a lot of kids, like, in different high schools, the only thing they feel good about our school is the sports system because they feel everybody else is a bunch of snobs. Mm -hmm. And so they were, you know, they had a lot of recognition in the school, but they also had prejudice problems that stopped them. And um, they had to withdraw from a nationwide con contest because of the prejudice. And a lot of minorities, I guess you can say, really feel bad about themselves and don't enjoy being in the school and so that's therefore that's why they called on me to do it in that school I really don't think so I, I imagine there would be because like I said they just had told me you know there's 250 Hispanics here and uh, most of them are pretty low on themselves and from what the past two months we've seen of you we want you to be the role model because you have potential and mm -hmm. And that's basically what they told me. And from what I've talked to, you know, I talk to, I don't stick in a little group. I talk to everybody, and um, they really feel bad about their self, I guess because of the image that the school gives them and the, that gets reflected off of their own peers. I guess you can call them peers. They go to school with them. Mm -hmm. and so they feel really bad because, of, because everybody else is getting the recognition, all the Mormons and stuff. They go to Brigham Young and everything. And, all these Hispanics, I mean, if they do go to college, they'll just go to City College, and that's all you get in Fresno. So. <laughs> um, well, my school, it sounds like it's similar to the other schools. It, it's mainly based on ac uh, sports, not academics. Out of a school that we have, we have almost 2,000 students, maybe only 36 make the honor roll, and that's very sad. And of the Hispanics, I think there was only maybe, maybe six or ten of us. And that's really sad because they don't encourage us to go further on. If they do encourage, it's only the, I'm, I'm afraid to say the blacks, because it, the blacks outnumber everybody else. It's 65% blacks, 20 some odd Hispanics, and the rest are uh, whites, Asians, and uh, Irans. Or, um, Iranians. Yeah, Iranians. And uh, it's really sad because you take those classes and they never said, oh, well, go further, do this, do that. No, it's, they do take the, the, the kids who which are colored, they take them into a class and say, well, you're colored, you have to fight for what you are, go for it, do it, you know. But when it comes to the Hispanics, it, it's like um, nothing. No one stands up and fights for you, mm. you know. It, it, was, it was so bad that we had a, uh, we've never had a single de Mayo thing until we protested. You know, and very few of us did attend. They they have a whole month for uh, Black History, but not Hispanics. You know, hmm. that's sad. Okay. Let's uh, switch gears here and talk about your friends. Um, sometimes friends can be a positive influence, and sometimes they can be a negative influence, right? How do you deal with your peers? Do your peers have the same goals that you have? And if they don't have the same goals that you have, how do you deal with that? Are your friends holding you back? Um, my friends um, pretty much have the same goals as I do, and um, even if we get in disagreements, you know, about things, and she thinks she, my friend thinks she knows everything, so um, <laughs> she like acts like a 30-year-old, and, and it gets on my nerves because I'm still a teenager and I still have a young mind. But um, she she says I'm naive, but I don't. I just I stick to my own opinion because I, I think that what I think is right, and I'm, I'm open-minded to um, adults. Uh, um, adult uh, information or whatever, and um, I don't know. I just I don't. I'm not really affected by my peers because um, most of the stuff I've already gone through that they have, and so I've already experienced everything, and I, I know, really know what's right for myself. Well, um, before I came to Venice, this is my. I've just had a year there. My my junior year, I went to St. Monica's. And when I was in St. Monica's, I mostly hung around with 
Hispanic girls, and one of them was she, her her boyfriend was a gang member, and I would go out with them and with with some gang members, and they would uh, smoke sherm, you know, PCP, um, stuff like that. And the whole while, I I was doing really well. I was um, I was the president of my class, and I was the editor of the newspaper. It was a small school, so I could do a lot of stuff. I was in drill team, and I was getting good grades. And even though I associated with them and, and felt like that they were my friends and I spoke really well to them, I didn't feel that they were holding me back at all. I didn't feel that they were influencing me to do what they did, you know. It was just, in, in fact, it was opposite because I saw, you know, what their lives led into, you know, a cycle of, of poverty and, and pregnancy and crime. and. You know, I, I didn't mind being with them, but I knew that it wasn't for me. Uh, now that I've been in Venice, I, I knew less people, and I've mostly hung around with uh, the people in my, in my AP and honors classes, which are very low on Hispanics. There's only, like, in my, chemist, my AP chemistry, there was uh, one other Hispanic girl in that class, and in my um, AP history also. Uh, and I, I didn't, well... With my AP chemistry girlfriend, I, I did hang, hang around, but with the other one, I didn't. And I mostly hang around with um, white males. <laughs> and, you know, they're, they're the ones that do have my similar goals now. And either way, I don't feel like that, I, that they influence me at all. They, ha they haven't held me back or pushed me at all, you know. It's just, it comes within me, you know. It's not something that they can change. Well, for me, uh, I mean, the I'm always like a counselor for my peers. I've never been affected by peer pressure, I can say easily, because I haven't. I've just always been very strong-willed and um, able. I've been somebody that other kids can come to and talk to about their problems, and I can share, you know, a lot of related situations I've been through like them. And so um, I like to hang around with older people than I, because... Sometimes I feel people my age are not as mature as I am, and so, it, you know, I don't have as much fun. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't reject anybody. I mean, they can be a druggie or they can be a saint. I mean, it's just if the person needs my help, I'll give it to them. So I just, I, the people that I really do hang around with, they don't drink or they, they don't smoke. and. Maybe once in a while they'll party and stuff, but, you know, I'm not the one, I'm not with them because, you know, that doesn't interest me because I've watched, you know, relatives or older cousins of mine do that. And so I, I just watch them make the mistake and I make sure I don't do it. Mm -hmm. And so I just try to reflect that on other students and um, they seem to think I'm okay and I think I'm okay and so that's what I do. That's okay. um, my friends seem to have the same goals as me. We all want to go to college. And we're like a support group for each other because we go through the midterms, the finals and everything, and we'll study together. And it's really nice because it, we're, I guess you could, a small little group because I have all kinds of friends from gang members to um, honor students, everything. You know, I don't discriminate against anyone. And the thing is that even when you have friends that maybe their goals aren't as high as you, they still, they're, they're still like, oh, we're proud of you, you know, go for it, you know. Hey, we want to see you up there one of these days. And that's the nice thing. You know, that's one thing I can say. But that school has given me a lot of friends that are very supportive. Okay, that's good. All right, one last question. That is, uh, you all are successful, and we want more students like you. So a new student enrolls on your campus. What advice are you going to give them so that they can follow in your footsteps? Let's start here. Okay. Um, the new student, well, I've had an experience like that. Uh, he was an Hispanic, and he was from a, a small town called Fowler. And I guess he looked upon the school that I, that I go to now as, you know, wow, you know, I'm not going to fit in here. I'm not going to be happy here because, you know, you see Mexicans here and there, and um, they're not really too enthused. I mean, you'll see a lot of other kids running around and, messing around and down there, you know, when we have rallies or something, they'll be involved. But the Hispanics are just kind of sitting there, you know, can't wait until school's over and uh, just get rid of that, just get out of that place. And so what I do to him is, or male or female, whatever, I just let them know that they have to be their own person. If they care about themselves, 
and if they care about people like like them you know they will make the choice to change and try to make other people change so it's really great to have role models and stuff but I don't you know it I just don't I just I've watched people and a lot of role models that I've had have made mistakes and they let me down and so personally I don't mm -hmm. and so what I want to be I just want to be a role model for people to start up the role model move I mean a real good role model move not just one here and one there you know when some people catch the fever and then some don't and so what I'll do is I'll just you know let them know it's straight out that I, I'm there for them and um, what they got to do is they got to be bold and they got to be able to if they want it they have to go after it because it is going to be handed to them on a silver platter and you got to work for it um, okay, this is what I tell most of the freshmen because we're, as student council members, we have to kind of orientate them and tell them, okay, you're going to be in high school, you're scared, but that's okay. Do your thing. I mean, study, work hard. Hey, th that's the way you're going to get something out of life because you start from the beginning. If you do something good in the beginning, it's going to turn out great at the end, you know. Okay, so what? People call you nerds. Big deal. That makes you unique. That makes you one of a kind. No one can compare that. You know, and I feel that that's the most important thing that you have to remember. Okay, I'm Hispanic, big deal. But I'm going to be something, I'm going to do something with my life. You know, I'm not going to be stereotyped because I don't believe in that. And that's what I tell them. And they're like, but, you know, what if people pressure me into, like, gangs? I go, well, you let them pressure you and you're going to go that way. Just, you have to think about your future. You want money. You want a nice house. You want all those things. Just think about the future and work hard. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Well, like he was saying, in the, in the sense that you have to be individualistic. You have to just say to yourself, you know, set your goals and say, this is what I want, and nobody's going to deviate me from, from doing that. Nobody's going to say that I can't take that AP class or I'm not capable of taking that honors class. It just You have to know what, what you can do and keep reminding yourself every day that you can do it. You know, even though you might get one bad grade, so what? You can keep trying. It's not the end of the world, you know? <laughs> you just you just have to set your goals and, and not, not let anybody upset you inside, you know? Mm -hmm. Your parents, your friends, nothing, you know? Just, just keep on your way and just do what you have to do. Um, I would just tell the person... Um, to come as as themselves and not to change for anybody and also that um, if people start judging them like on the first day of school then obviously they should know that the people at, at the school um, are sheltered because you know if they just stereotype somebody without knowing them at all then then they're, they're the ones that have the problem and I would just encourage my friend to just keep going for her goals or her, his goals and um, not to worry about what anybody else thinks because you know because they're a person. Start off with introducing yourself, say your name, and the high school that you represent, okay. and also the city. My name is Roberto Mejia, and I come from Belmont High School in Los Angeles. Okay. Pass it. My name is Lisa Fernandez, and I go to East Bakersfield High School, and that's in Bakersfield. My name is Mary Campos, and I'm from Jefferson High School, which is in Daly City, a suburb of San Francisco. My name is Lorenzo Alvarez, and I'm from Wasombeo High School, which is in Wasombeo High. Wasombeo. Okay, let's start off talking about your school. Has your school helped you in being the students that you are today? And if it has helped you, how has it helped you? Well, doing English. Okay. Well, well, my I I I think that my school hasn't been that that influential well, it, it comes from myself and from supporting my family um, but in, in the school as far as the school I think the teachers they do encourage but th that's how that's how far they go it's not it's not like um, they, they they lead you to think in a certain way that has to come from your own self you gotta have that initiative in you so they, they do help but, uh, but up to a certain point and I believe that, that that initiative I mentioned comes from, from your own self and from support from your parents and other individuals that, that you may look up to. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> um, I think most of it's from my own ambition, but in my school there's a lot of competition 
for leadership, and it's mainly between girls. I don't know if it's our, I guess in high school they say girls mature more than boys do, and it's it's a lot of girls competing, and and so we try and do better. But it it would have to come from myself a lot of it. If I didn't want to do it, I wouldn't. And the students at East High, I guess it would be the students more than the teachers, more than the counselors, would have um, influenced me. In my case, it's a lot different. It's my teachers and the administrators at my school that really helped me. Because coming from a family with two illiterate parents that didn't attend a day of school, it was really hard for me to get really into education. Mm -hmm. And it was until I reached eighth grade that teachers started telling me about universities because they saw my potential. I had to wait for someone to urge me to take college prep classes because I wasn't going to. I was going to take the easy way out. But through the help of admin and with their help, I'm just going to try to, I don't know, just try to make it with all the college prep classes I'm going to have next year. And they urged me to taking AP courses. And with their help, I, I now I have passed the English AP test and the history AP test. So now it's going to be a lot easier for me in my freshman year. So I think it's a lot. In my in my school, it's not too much competition because I come from a school with a very bad reputation. So they urge me a lot as one of the gifted students to go on t to the university. So I feel that w without their help, I wouldn't be where I am at today. Bueno, en mi caso es diferente porque yo me estaba moviendo de lugares. Primero en México, lo en Guadalajara y lo aquí, pero. En estos últimos tres años sí he logrado algo y mis maestros me han ayudado, ya que ahorita corrí para vicepresidente el año pasado y voy a ser vicepresidente de la secundaria en este año de Guasumbil. Hasta cierto punto lo, las consejeras, como hay una consejera para cada grado, en el año 9, en el grado 9, no, no fue mucha la atención porque era el primer año y a lo mejor sí la necesitaba porque había muchos estudiantes. Pues en este último año, la consejera, yo pienso que sí, ayudó mucho a, en cómo decidir mi futuro, en qué carrera y, y en lo que estoy haciendo ahorita. Pa ella fue la que nom me nominó para esta conferencia. How are they letting you know? Not just yourself, but other students in your high school. Let's start here. Um, we have a partnership program, and we have Mesa, and um, my counselor, Dr. Nuanis, is very up on, very much for just Chicano, Hispanic, Latino students, getting them to college, and he personally takes them to colleges and tours them and helps them he makes, you know, he sits down with them and let's figure out your schedule for next year. You need to take these good classes. You know, you need to do this. You need to do that. Him and maybe Mr. Reyes, who's now, um, he's with the partnership. Just about those two are the only two. And we have about five or six counselors. And they're about the only two that really help with the Chicano and Latino. But they do a lot. They get the partnership going. We go to Santa Barbara and visit, and they help us out with their schedules. And I think that's you know those two. They're really helpful. Okay. Someone go to. Well, I think my school does uh, do, do, does motivate you know Latinos and Chicanos to to go into education, and the, and this is a. Uh, Done by the by the principal of the school, she's she's a Cuban and she herself herself was an immigrant. She came here and she tries to to tell you know the student body how important education is and and not not try you know to to go without it because there isn't there isn't anything, bes you know that 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 you can have besides education you know that that you're gonna progress because without e education. With a, with a college education, there, you know, it's it's gonna be you, you're not gonna go so you're gonna just go to a certain level. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna go further than that. And and the, also the teachers at the school, e even though they, we don't have that many Latino teachers uh, at my school, 
they 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 still tell the, the the Latinos and the Asian because the school is predominantly Latino and Asian. They tell them uh, not to try to forget about the, the our roots and uh, our parents, you know, past and their experiences. And that it is very important. And th that is the reason they say they teach at our school because they find something special in the student body and with the uh, with the Latino and Asiatic. Uh, students that they wouldn't find in an Anglo school in the valley uh, or any or any other part of Southern California. Okay. Coming from a school of great ethnic diversity, I find that the, the administrators and the counselors and every urge all all races to go on to college. They don't take any special like preference to any race or religion or anything. They just urge everyone because it's. Like in my case, for instance, I was f I've had a lot of low points in my education. I always found to keep up my grades, but it was my attendance that really messed me up. And they most a lot of administrators would just gave up, but they always bring up the points that I have too many things going for me, and they make a point that I'm a woman and that I am a Chicana. So I find that they do try to encourage Chicanos a lot because in our school the dropout rate is very high and a great percentage of them are Chicanos. So they do take special interest into Chicanos but they urge all people in our school to go on. So I find that they are a great help especially towards Chicanos. Okay. Bueno, en la secundaria que yo voy hay como 30% Chicanos, son como mil personas mil estudiantes chicanos y nomás hay como un, como un consejero y un maestro que están muy interesados en los chicanos pero yo pienso que dos personas no es bastante para mil estudiantes que son chicanos y latinos yo pienso que necesitan más atención porque yo pienso que hay más personas póngale 20 personas que podrían venir a esta conferencia que para mí son los considero que califican a igual que yo. Okay. Let's talk about the kids who aren't making it. <laughs> you guys are doing okay. You're here as as evidence to that. What about all the kids you've left behind? What's holding them back? Why aren't they succeeding? Either from school or family or friends. As uh I, I don't know the exact reasons why they may not be succeeding, but my guess would be because of economical pro problems they're, they're, they're undergoing. Uh, the school I attend, it's uh, a very poor school. It's, it's in the inner cities. It's in downtown LA. So that, that would be one of the major reasons because of the hardship of the economical pro problems they are undergoing. That, that and, and sometimes they just came here. They're very, very recent immigrants to the country. They they feel they feel like isolated from society. Nobody understands them, and that's that is the reason why they join gangs because they think the solution to to f that isolation is joining a gang. That those people in the gangs understand them, and and, and they've no, they know the, they have undergone the same experiences, maybe a discrimination and disappointment, and they could relate to them. So that's their easy way out, joining a gang. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I think it might be from where a person lives. If they live in a bad part of the city, around them is it's a poor neighborhood, and they have they don't see anybody making it in their world, and they don't get any motivation from anyone around them. They have no self-motivation, no inner initiative or anything, so they they get, uh, they just feel down about themselves, and they don't want to do anything, and maybe they think there's nothing out there for them, and that's usually, I guess, when they start dropping out of school, when they think, why should I finish it, there's nothing out there for me, um, and maybe that's why they don't get along with other people, because they, they're grown up with this, um, this feeling that that people are going to be prejudiced against them or something, so they don't want to even try. I think that might be a reason, and that's another reason why they drop out of high school. I think it has a lot to do with what both of them say, economically and psycholo psychologically, because if they try and make it, 
it's like they're always going to be afraid of failing. And I know a lot of people, like I have a lot of friends that like look down on me, even though I do better in school than they do. They look down on me because they think I'm trying with for, with no cause. They think that I'm trying to make the world better for Latinos and that I will not succeed. Mm -hmm. So I find that it's really psychological because a lot of people think that their family just puts them down, that since they belong to a Latino family, they should be labor, you know, instead of, instead of using their, mi their mind, they think that they should be manual workers. And I think that has a lot to do with it because they feel that they were bred that way. <laughs> you know, and I find that a lot in our society with a lot of friends because a lot of my friends are Latinos and I feel really bad because all my Asian friends and I are succeeding while my Latino friends are just going down. And I see it happening a lot. And I think money has a lot to do with it, but I think their mental being is just the total cause of it. Now, how did they get to be that way? I mean, did, were they just woke up one day and said, okay, I'm a failure? I think it was just through the years, because I encountered a lot of put downs too when I was younger. But as soon as I hit eighth grade, my teacher was. He was an Anglo, but still he helped me. He took special interest in me, and that was in eighth grade. I haven't been a student for almost four years now, and still he follows me. He's working on scholarships for me and everything. And it's like a lot of those students never tried in classes with, when they had teachers like that that would give them that chance. So they just never had the incentive or they never had the help to just urge them on so they thought they weren't good enough. No one ever urged them so they thought they weren't worth being recognized. Bueno, yo considero muchas razones. Una, que vienen de otro país y aprender inglés. Y uh, muchos piensan que ya a la edad de 16, 7, 8 años, como cuando salen de la high school a los 18 años, dicen, oh, ya me estoy poniendo muy viejo. Yo ya debería de tener un carro, un trabajo, mi novia. Ya me está saliendo bigote que estoy haciendo en la escuela, ¿verdad? <risa> Entonces ellos se desesperan y como si no hay muchas personas quien los siga apoyando, que sigan en la escuela, ellos se salen de la escuela y ¿a dónde van? A trabajar a los files. Entonces de allí nunca van a terminar sus estudios o hacer una carrera. Y como no hay nadie quien los ayude, es que por eso es una de cada dos personas, un latino se sale de la escuela. Sí, pero ¿cómo es que, que, debo, que debemos hacer para ayudar a esos estudiantes? Mm. Primero, en mi caso sería teniendo más, en la high school que yo voy, teniendo más personas latinas que los pudieran apoyar a, a salir bien la high school. Lo de ahí de la high school, tratarlos de meter al colegio, pero no, ¿cómo lo quise decir? Que sepan que si van un, tres años de colegio, ya van a, que sepan que van a tener un trabajo seguro de allí y que van a ganar como más de al doble que lo que ganarían en el fil en un año, en más poco tiempo. Esa sería una de mis ideas que pienso que Okay, and uh, let's, let's just have a couple more questions about your friends. Now, um, I would like to know if your friends have the same goals that you have, and if they do have the same goals, um, do you support each other? Or if they don't have the same goals, how do you deal with that? Well, my f the school I go to, it's, uh, it's Hispanic and Asians. So, so, th so in, my, in, the, in the classes I'm in, uh, mo most of the people in the classes I, I have are Asians. So, a and the few Latinos, the few Latinos who are enrolled in those classes, uh, you know, they, they, they somewhat think, think alike, but, but they, j they, they don't, they don't want to think about, you know, their roots or anything. They, they just say, just get an education and try try to make it and don't worry about all those problems because if you do you're just gonna you're gonna go nuts do you know just don't don't worry man they, they just said don't worry about it get your own education worry about yourself that's the attitude and as as far as the other uh, latinos who are not uh, you know in college bound classes well they they have 
they they have those same uh, almost the same goals. It's just that it's just that they need a little bit more push. They need they need they need somebody to tell them you know the, because I believe they could be in the uh, anybody can be in those uh, honors classes. It's just that if they weren't if they weren't uh, as uh, not not lazy it, it, because they're not lazy. They just need somebody to 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 enlighten them in mm -hmm. a way. To tell them, yeah, motivate them. To tell them this is not what life is all about, you know. Just because um, get an education, suffer now, and you see all the, all the, all the good things later, and see and see all the all, all the hard work, and see how it pays off, rather than than enjoying life. The, the, the if you think you're enjoying life right now, and then you're gonna be suffering later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I guess I have to say that all my. We all have the same goal. Not that we all want to be the same thing, but we all are planning to go to college. And my um, my closest friends, there's four of them that I consider like really best friends. They they all want to go to college, but each and every one of us wants to go into a separately, totally different field. Um, one of them's not sure what she wants to go to, but she she's pretty sure she's going to a four-year university after high school. Um, two of my other friends want to go to the, um, the community college for two years and transfer. I want to go to a four-year university right after high school, and I think that's what another friend of mine, and we all have our hearts set on separate universities, except for the two um, community college ones. That's business and um, journalism. The other one, um, my friend Christy wants to go into um, accounting and Maria, psychology, and me, pre-med, so we all, you know, have our hearts set on college, and we're planning on going, so all my friends are all supportive, and that's what we want to do, so no one's not saying, well, I'm not going to college, and everyone's hopefully graduated from high school, we all should be, <laughs> so we're all very supportive of each other. Okay. As far as friends are concerned, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not very supportive whatsoever, they don't encourage me. My education is one thing that I do not talk about with my friends, mm -hmm. with my really close friends, because I'm very sorry to say, but almost all of my best friends have dropped out of high school, and none of them are working as of yet, and they are all under 18. And at times I'll be very ecstatic about like a reward I received at school or something, and it's, it hurts to know that you can't tell anyone about it, because I can't tell my sisters about it, because they're so green with envy that they just, if I even bring up my education, they'll throw just a total fit. Mm -hmm. And my friends, I just wouldn't burden them with my happiness, because they'll just get depressed on themselves. Right. And it's happened to me a lot. So yeah. what I've learned to do is all I do is share it with myself. I just share my joy alone, or I share it with teachers. Mm -hmm. So the, my only support are from people who deal with my ac academics directly. So I find that I have no support whatsoever from any of my friends or family. Bueno, yo a todos mis amigos, amigas, hermanos y hermanas les digo que estudien porque y les doy ejemplos que le pregunten a una persona, un doctor, cómo llegaron a ser doctores y cuánto no ganan y los doctores van a contestar que estudiando, que yendo al colegio y llevan buena vida uh -huh. ellos no, no necesitan de trabajar tan duro para para vivir y llevar una vida más más calmada okay. right. 